One of Canada's wealthiest families is dueling amongst themselves before the Supreme Court of British Columbia. Lawyers for Edward Rogers, son of Rogers Communications founder Ted Rogers, argued that his decision to replace the, the company's board of directors was legal under BC corporate law. Lawyers representing Edward's mother and sisters say that the move was not only illegal but against the elder Rogers' wishes. So with us this morning is Richard LeBlanc, former, uh, professor of law, governance, and ethics at York University. First of all, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, really dramatic story that is unfolding. Uh, let's bring everyone up to speed. So Edward Rogers, he was ousted as the chair of Rogers Communications after unsuccessfully trying to remove CEO Joe Natale. He then used his power as chair of the family trust to replace the company's board of directors with his own people and reinstall himself as chair of Rogers Communications. So... The family is saying that this is all going against what Ted Rogers wanted. Explain that for us. Well, uh, Ted Rogers uh, wanted consultation. Uh, he wanted a, a shareholder meeting, and he wanted rotation of the chair. Um, none of that has occurred. So Edward Rogers is hanging his hat on a, 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 a section of the B.C. statute that enables uh, a resolution in lieu of a meeting to replace directors. The B.C. statute is defective. Uh, none of the other statutes across Canada or the federal statute has that provision. You must replace directors at an annual meeting. Uh, so much of yesterday uh, was whether a meeting should occur or not. Um, one one uh, lawyer said uh, if, if he's allowed to do this, he meaning Edward Rogers, what's to prevent him from doing it again and replacing more directors? And that's, that's the implication. I predict that Mr. Rogers might uh, self-appoint himself as CEO if he wins on Friday. And if anyone on the board disagrees with him, including family members, he'll use the same provision uh, to replace them. So I've never seen this, this much concentration of power in a public company. It's unprecedented. Right, and let's talk a little bit about that because Edward Rogers, his lawyers are saying that this comes down to whether or not the move to replace a board of directors is legal under BC corporate law. This is a publicly traded company. Uh, you have Class A shares, Class B shares. The Class A shares, 97.5% are controlled by the Rogers Control Trust. Uh, they have the voting rights. The B shares own about 70% of the company and do not have voting rights. So how does this all make sense? It doesn't, because uh, what you have is one person controlling 97%. And that 97%, as you point out, is only 29% of the total equity. So I predict what could happen is institutional shareholders might launch an oppression remedy or even family members. Uh, and oppression means if the interest of any shareholder is disregarded. And certainly the family members could argue that their interests have been disregarded. And uh, non-voting Class B shareholders have been disregarded if there's no opportunity to have a meeting and, and ask questions. So oppression, uh, I think, uh, can occur uh, after, after the judgment Friday if the judge allows Mr. Rogers to, uh, to replace these directors. How do you think this is going to pan out for Edward Rogers? Because he made this move as chair of the family trust, not as chair of the, of the company. So do you think that's going to factor in here? Yes, the trust has all of the power. And I was surprised yesterday that there wasn't enough discussion on uh, the trust. Uh, when you have a trust, the interests of the beneficiaries, including the matriarch, Mrs. Rogers, and both sisters, must be tended to by all members of the trust. And certainly they could argue that their interests have been adversely affected. In fact, it may even be possible to, requ to, to request that the court uh, step in and uh, uh, circumvent Mr. Edwards, Mr. Roger, Edward Rogers' powers under the trust. The other way to remove Mr. Rogers is to accumulate seven votes. Um, I don't think that will happen because if, it, if they had seven votes, it, it would have happened by now. Uh, so I think what you have here is the perfect storm with a defective act, uh, the British Columbia Act, uh, dual class shares, and uh, a control trust with one person in charge. Um, and um, and Mr. Edwards is walking through all of these procedural doors to advance um, uh, these interests. It's unprecedented. And Richard, just very quickly here, just a few seconds, but how long do you think we'll see this process go on for? This, this could last months. This will not end on Friday, regardless of the outcome. 
the the outcome on Friday will be appealed, and uh, individuals have already said if the uh, if the outcome is adverse, they will appeal. So. Okay. Uh, this is a reason to involve the British Columbia Securities Commission to step in as well. All right, Richard LeBlanc, thanks so much. My pleasure.